Hang on a second, and we are live. I'm Adam Stokes. Welcome back to the channel for the Crypto Sunday Summary, this being the 23rd of January correction. The 29th of January, 2023, where it's always a free and easy way of supporting this work is by simply hitting that like button, subscribing if you're new, ensuring you also knock that notification bell so you never miss a new episode. If I'm coming through, can I get a five by five or loud and clear in the comments? As you do, I'll just see who is in the hood. Benio, g'day, good to see you. Uh, chicken's doing well. Chicken's actually right next to me. I'll bring her out a little bit later, but she's um, it was very touch and go, and I'm very grateful for all of your comments with respect to the chicken. <laughs> I know to many it's just a chicken, but I've had this thing for years, and it's uh, it's more than just a chicken, especially in my world. Clintrons, you give me a loud and clear. Ian Fraser, loud and clear. GK, loud and clear. Finn Bears saying, hey, Adam. Globetrotter, how's the hammy? Thank you for asking. Okay, so many of you know that just before summer started, I managed to blow a hammy stealing second base. N not in dating, in an actual baseball game. <laughs> I was on first base, stole second base, and as soon as I took off, I just blew this hammy, and it was right before Christmas, right before the summer break, and man. But I did the right thing. I've been going to phys physio, been getting um, uh, massages, doing the right exercises, taking it easy, doing a lot of aqua work, and it's feeling good, and the game, the season's back on, but I'm just, I'm worried to get back on the field because it's, it's a very dangerous injury in the sense that once it's gone, you've got to wait weeks. So it's been nearly six weeks. I'm going to give it one more week and then I'm going to step back on the field. But we're going to make finals this year. So my baseball team's doing well. And I, if I don't get back out there, I'm going to miss those finals. Um, who else have we got here? Craig Patton saying loud and clear. Uh, Gracie's here. Hemi Raw, how are you going, brother? Good to see you. Welcome here. Alpha. 1SE, morning. Where are you um, morning me from? It's uh, evening here, but it's good that we're global. Um, six to eight weeks, that's right. Uh, high hex, uh, high expectations. I love how you hexicons <laughs> are so createful, creative with your names. Createful, God, can't speak tonight. Hexpectations, that's brilliant. Uh, yeah, six to eight weeks. Got me saying hey up. And Jolita, g'day, Jolita. Good to see you. Jolita, should I call you Jolita or Yulita? Because in some of your comments, it's Jolita, and then other times it's Yul Yulita. Uh, whichever you prefer, that's how I'll identify you. Whilst you're doing that, let's check out the uh, heat map as I bring it up so we've got a bit better picture of it. Looking at the heat map, we currently have Bitcoin at $23,192. What a fantastic week or month in crypto. So we have uh, basically 40% gains in Bitcoin this year. <laughs> now, we started obviously from a pretty low point, but I can confirm the best performing asset in 2023, noting it is still pretty early in the year, is Bitcoin. Now, your crypto may have performed equally as well, but it's not gold, it's not property, it's not bonds, it's not stocks, it's no commodities market. Bitcoin, noting that we are only 29 days into the year, is the number one performing asset in 2023. Congratulations. And you may have seen the tweet that I released as I get distracted already. This tweet here, as I bring it up, look, I, I'm just seeing patterns here that you, you can see if you track this out. So you're looking at Bitcoin to USD four hourly candles. And you can see these little series of bull flags, compression, bust out, compre compression, breakout, compression, compression, breakout, compression, breakout, compression, breakout. And this is what we want to see form up here. So we are just at this point, if you can see my cursor, we're just at this point here and it is tracking exactly how the TA is playing out, but we ne really need to wait till next week. So th that's the gap we want to see. So of the next day or so, really when the American markets wake up, we've spoken about this before, uh, it's America's uh, Sunday morning at the moment, depending which time zone you're in. Uh, Australia is pretty much one of the first countries to go into Monday. So if you look at the time zones around the world, and the advantage uh, in, is for waiting for America to wake up. The advantage to understanding this is that when America wakes up, that's when it really triggers the market. So it's really the next 24 hours will be very interesting for me. The next 24 hours, I want to see one of these big, fat, juicy bull flags pump up, but we'll have to wait and see. Back to the heat map where we can see Ethereum at the $1,593. It did cross the $1,600 mark with BNB back up, up over that $300 mark. Very happy with that. XRP at $0.41. Cents. LTC, look at Litecoin go, nearly at the $100 mark. Dogecoin still floating around that $0.08 cent mark. It's been there for a long time. ADA at $0.3.8 cents, or $0.38 cents rather. And we can see that we've got red and green and grey stablecoins. What does that mean? 
the market's deciding which way to go. The USDC is in green, USDT in gray, and Binance USD, the three biggest stable coins, are all different colors. That's pretty exciting. Green, gray, and red. We can see this money moving in and out of markets. And when it comes to stable coins in Japan, I'll just make the point on what Japan's doing with regulating their, their space in crypto. And they're doing a very good job. I, I, I think we could follow suit with what Japan's doing because they're basically saying, all right, we'll let you play in this space. We're going to allow stable coins into our economy, but you have to hold real equity, real value in those stable coins in Japan. Now, whether that's gold or US dollars or yen locked in a Japanese vault in Tokyo or somewhere, that, that can be sort of padded out later. But at the moment, they're basically saying, look, we want proof of reserves, which is great. And they're not going to allow their people to be, well, they're going to do their best anyway, to um, protect their people from being wrecked from fake stable coins. Stable coins play a very vital part in the ecosystem of crypto, but if, they, you know, if they've got nothing backing them, we're in big trouble. We're in really big trouble. I was worried about USDT uh, Tether for ages, but ultimately after many years, it's held its ground and it's played out. But if everyone did a rug pull on USD or USDC or Binance USD, would there be enough reserves behind it? We know that there's not enough reserves in cash and we kind of accept that with the banks, but do we know it with stable coins? Japan is going uh, out alone and saying, look, we, we want our own proof of reserves. We don't trust any other country. We're going to trust ourselves. You want to use this here. That's what we're going to do. And I think that's fantastic. I think I think we could all follow suit in that. But um, you can see that the as I already go on a bit of digression away from the heat map, what's very concerning is that the debt ceiling for the United States has already been reached. So what, what does that mean? If If you want to borrow money from a bank, the bank will tell you, hey, we can't lend you anymore. We don't trust you. You're not good for it. But when the United States borrows money from the Federal Reserve, it's the United States that sets their own debt ceiling because the Federal Reserve will say, you've basically got unlimited credit. Unlimited credit. You can have as much money as you want. Now, you're going to have to pay it back. But America has to set its own debt ceiling. In the past, every time that they wanted to increase uh, borrowing from the Fed, they actually had to go to Congress and it was a very slow process. And after World War One, they said, let's just make a debt ceiling so the government of the day can, you know, take as much money as they need to a certain point so they don't get bogged down in Congress and Parliament equivalent or the Congress. And they can take this money out kind of like a line of credit and then pay it back. Now, they set these debt ceilings, which have been increased 100 times since, <laughs> since they put in a debt ceiling. So, the the reverse to this is imagine you had unlimited credit from the bank and that's what the federal reserve is it's unlimited credit to the american government but the american government puts their own debt ceilings up so it's kind of reverse to what you and i do to the bank we go to the bank and say hey can we lend borrow this from us and they'll say well let us check your records but imagine it was the other way around imagine you checked yourself and you said no i actually can't afford to borrow this money so i'm not even going to go to the bank and ask them for money but when it when it comes to Governments doing this, it's not just America, America is uh, and the biggest example, of course, but governments do it with their own reserve banks or their federal reserves or whatever the equivalent is, the Bank of England. They they figure out how much money they can afford to basically borrow from, the, from their Fed or their centralized lending body. So they've reached their limit and all the money that they've borrowed from them, uh, according to Janet Yellen, is going to be expired or used up by June this year. So we're basically five months out of America running out of money. So they're already, and hear me out, I know you're saying America can never run out of money. Well, they're already trillions in debt. They've reached their debt ceiling. The only way that they can get more money is increase their debt ceiling. And what will that mean? Money printing. So this isn't going away quickly. And it's a whole video in itself where you can see there's going to be a lot of pressure around the world because they're one of the things that the Federal Reserve is now sort of charged with um, kind of unofficially as a responsibility is to ensure that the United States dollar remains as a global reserve currency. And it's reasonable. You know, if they want to stay number one, that's who doesn't want to be number one. And if one entity is lending out all this money and determining interest rates, perhaps another thing is to ensure that they maintain their global power. It's all coming to a head. It's all coming to a head where essentially we've had a flu, we've had uh wars are gonna be careful what i say here we've had lockdowns we've had um money printing we've had interest rates go up we've had uh, 
global challenge, global power is rising. And the other thing that's quite interesting is when it comes to the International Monetary Fund, now when this, these dominoes, these countries start to fall, which they are, are all starting to fall because all fear is fake and all fear is collapsing. Before there was only one main lender and that was the IMF. But now China has so much power and so much money. You can actually see that they kind of, there's kind of two options. Instead of borrowing money from the IMF, which is the US dollar, they could now in fact go to China and borrow money from them. Now, what does that mean? That means that could in fact drop the demand on the US dollar even further. And if you look what happened with the world exchange, uh, sorry, world economic forum rather, with what Saudi Arabia is alluding to with not using the US dollar as the petrodollar, this, this is big. It is really, really big. The way you ensure that the US dollar or any dollar, any currency or anything maintains some type of value or purchasing power is that it must be in demand. At the moment, it's still in demand because many countries, all the dominoes that are falling, they're selling their currency and devaluing their currency beyond buying the US dollar to pay off their debt. That ensures that there's a demand on it. The SWIFT network is still using the US dollar. That ensures there's a demand on it. The petrodollar, which is the US dollar, that ensures there's a demand on it. But that's all starting to change. Now, I've been saying this for a while, but it's actually now coming to the head. It's coming to the head where they're all starting to actually break away from the US dollar. What does it all mean? It means that we're just going to see a shift in in where the confidence is. Uh, we want to avoid politics in this um, sort of Sunday summary. But we, why do we talk about the macro? Because we're in a crypto winter and it's during the crypto winter you really study the macro. If you're thinking, I want to invest in, I don't know, ADA or Tron, well, cool, but start extrapolating it into the big picture because that's what we're doing in the crypto winter. In a crypto summer, honestly, it's kind of difficult not to make money here. In the crypto summer, I've had people in the past say, oh, I've got this program and it can uh, generate this money by doing this. And I said, well, has it ever worked in a bear market? And they're like, I don't know. And I said, well, until you've tested this product in a bear market, it's kind of impossible to not make money in crypto. The way you lose money in crypto in a, in a, in a bull run in a bull market when it's a crypto summer is you start investing in ICOs or crazy NFTs and you over, you know, you borrow against what you're uh, investing. That is, instead of using your own money, you're borrowing and you start doing trades with a hundred times leverage and you're doing these quick swing trades. That's how you really lose money in a bull run or a summer, a crypto summer. If you don't do any of that stupid stuff and you really just put money in sort of now and you wait for summer to come, as in the crypto summer, it's kind of impossible not to make money. Even, even though there are so many dodgy coins out there, if you throw your money on the table and there's 10 different, there's 22,000 coins at the moment and you bet on 10 coins, you only need one or two of them to come up because that one or two is going to do a better than 10 to one. So it doesn't matter that the eight others don't come up. But the truth is they, <laughs> they typically do come up. So you, you bet on 10 and eight come up 100 to one. And it's like, well, that was difficult. But of course, the difficult part then is when do you sell? And some people don't sell and they just ride it into the ground. And the other difficult part is taxes. They sell and they don't realize that they have a massive tax bill. And then three years later, the tax man says, you made a million dollars in 2018 or 2017, you owe us half a million dollars in tax. By that time, you've already blown it on Lambos and holidays and whatever, and there's there's no money. So then that's where you can get really wrecked without even realizing it until many years later. In the crypto winter where we are right now, and some are saying that spring is coming, my crypto brothers and sisters, this is where you start looking at the macro, you start playing the big game and you start you know, investing in some of these great buys out there. I would suggest that Ethereum is undervalued. XRP is desperately undervalued if, big if, they get past the SEC. Dogecoin, who knows with Dogecoin, aid is undervalued if it performs. Sol, that's a difficult one. You know, Dot's a difficult one as well. There's there's so many difficult coins to understand, but Quant, QNT, I'll talk about Quant just now briefly. Quant is essentially, um, imagine you've got these metaverses, right? So, Hang on, I'll go back a step. With Ethereum, Chainlink was built to basically link all of these different chains, as the name says, into whatever platform you build. So you build some smart contract and you need to link all of these different pieces of information into your smart contract that's built on Ethereum. Chainlink was kind of built for that. Is it working? Too early to say. Now we go over to Quant, QNT. 
they're, they're linking many things. It's kind of like a chain link, but the way they're doing it is that they're also looking at the metaverse. So there is no metaverse. There is lots of metaverses at the moment. And th that's an issue because if you've built in Axie and I've built in the sandbox and someone's built in Decentraland and we want to wander into each other's metaverses, if there's no way of linking that, then it's not, it doesn't really work. It's like you, you know, you send a message on your Apple iPhone and someone else wants to receive their message on their Android. They're two different phones. They're both phones, but if they're a completely different system, they won't interlink. And it's the same with web browsers and web pages and web servers. We take it for granted now, but there's a lot of technology in the background that makes these things seamless. You use a, an Android, he uses an iPhone, and they just work together. Uh, when we go to Quant, Quant will be basically making these bridges and linking these metaverses and other pro products. It's more than the metaverse. But to keep it simple at this stage, they'll be linking all of these metaverses together. And that's great. That's really good because it allows me to say, right, I'm going from the sandbox into Decentraland and then over to what I, whatever metaverse comes up, maybe meta itself. Do you think meta itself will ever actually exist? Maybe. Who knows? But it doesn't matter will have the choice and the freedom to go in between these metaverses. Okay, let's look at some of your comments after my big rant. Craig Patton, what's your thoughts? Oh, I could put your, here we go. What's your thoughts on Tezos now that Californian DMV is going to use it to replace their systems? Craig, I don't know. I'd have to look into that further. I would just say I would want confirmation that they are actually using it. Um, I know there's articles that come out that they say that they're actually you know, we're doing this, but sometimes I'll give an example. Here's an, I think it was Tezos. Yeah, I believe it was Tezos. Oh, no, no, no. It was, um, who was it? Tron, the old Tron. That's right. <laughs> so Tron said, or there was an article that came out, Tron didn't say it, but someone said in a tweet that Tron and Amazon have partnered up. Now, that didn't happen. What had actually happened was, Tron was serving, was storing some of their information on Amazon Web Services. And you can see how that can sort of trickle out and become sort of distorted with uh, the information that's actually happening. So we'll have to see. Uh, Asadasa. Asadasa. <laughs> cool name, man. Do you get charged tax moving to a ledger? No. So... Uh, hang on, yes and no. If you move your crypto from point A to point B, it looks like you've sold it or moved it or exchanged it or swapped it, which will trigger a tax event. So yes, it will, but no, you don't have to pay it. What do I mean by that? You have to keep good records of it. So when you actually move it from point A to point B, you have to ensure that you just keep a little record there that you've you've transferred it from point A to point B and you didn't sell it, you didn't liquidate it, you didn't sacrifice it, you've actually just moved it and then suddenly you'll be good and you won't have to pay that tax on it. If you don't record that, especially if you're not doing your tax every year and five or 10 years later, someone says, oh, you liquidated or sold it here. It's very difficult to track it. M my advice is use Coinly. I'm sorry to plug this product, but if you come over to the crypto.land, you click on Coinly, you plug in all your wallets, and, and addresses and um, exchanges, not your private key, just your public keys. Every time you do a swap or a move from yourself to yourself, that will track that. If you don't use something like Coinly, then it, it's on your own. You have to do it. Okay. Monkey Magic, was it Tezos that once announced partnership with McDonald's, but in reality, they were just getting burgers sent to their office? <laughs> I, I don't know, Monkey Magic, and really good example. So, Craig, you've asked me about Tezos and the DMV. I gave the example of uh, Tron and Amazon Web Services, and Monkey Magic is now saying, was it Tezos that spoke about partnership with McDonald's, but they were just getting burgers? I, I don't have the information to this. I can't see it. All I can say is that we've seen this before in the sense that sometimes it's not so black and white. Um, Ronnie, you said my audio is crackling. Can I get a radio check from you all? How am I sounding? It's my... Good. Uh, Dre, you've also said this is why we need good audio. Is my audio bad? Uh, uh, wild TR, Wild TR. Is Pulse Chain a total scam? I don't think so. Uh, I've sacrificed for it, and we'll have to see what happens. Rams, 
says, hey, mate, or hey, Adam, how's it going, mate? Hope the chicken is doing well. Uh, yes, yeah, she's recovered. I can't believe she's still alive. It was amazing. She was unconscious for like three or four days. I kept, um, kept her warm, clean, dry, and hydrated. And on day five, her eyes opened and she sat up. Uh, absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, a very special ch chicken. Uh, Jay says, G'day, Adam. Speaking of stable coins, your thought on NAB's digital dollar? Great question, Jay. Okay, so for my international viewers, NAB is one of our big four, National Australia Bank. And NAB is not the biggest. Commonwealth, the CBA, the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, is the biggest, but NAB's right up there. So NAB, as one of our big four pillars, has spoken about introducing a stable coin. Now, what's interesting is if you recall, Jay, several months ago, Commonwealth Bank of Australia said, we are going to incorporate Bitcoin into our net bank, not Comsec, but net bank. What's the difference? Net bank is an application on your phone that shows your savings account, your credit card account, your home loan accounts. Comsec is the other side of Commonwealth Bank where it's like, you know, trading on the Australian Stock Exchange and you can even trade on international exchanges. So Commonwealth Bank of Australia was saying, we're going to introduce Bitcoin onto our net bank, which was your daily transactions. That, that was big news. But then it didn't really happen. Now you can see that National Australia Bank is saying, well, we're going to create a stable coin and introduce it into our ecosystem. And what's actually going to happen, just the world according to me, Jay, is all banks are in crypto. But they're just, and the big four, we argue that in Australia, that they argue that they operate as an oglopoly. So a monopoly is when you're operating with complete power by yourself. An oligopoly is when you're doing it as a group of people. You might look at OPEC as an example, the oil producing, exporting countries. They're all at the top. They all produce oil and they kind of operate as a monopoly, but we call it an oligopoly. The big four in Australia are the same. And we can see this over history. I remember when I was doing my economics at um, uni that they were talking about whenever there's an interest rate rise, if you not, note this, Jay, every time there's an interest rate rise in Australia, you'll note that one of the banks goes first. There's an interest rate rise and then NAB goes first. Then the next interest rate rise, Commonwealth Bank goes first. Then it's ANZ. And what's the other one? Westpac. And they, it, isn't it ironic that they all take it in turns of going first for raising the interest rates? I mean, look at the data. You'll see that it's never always CBA goes first or NAB goes first or Westpac goes first. They take it in turns. And as a result, we can see them operating in this mono ogolopistic <laughs> I just got out of the sauna before I spoke to you please forgive me with my English which I'm really struggling with tonight they operate in this let's say cartel that's easier they operate in this cartel type scenario where they they're kind of working together but they're separate now how does this relate to crypto CBA was the first to say we're incorporating Bitcoin into our daily uh, application on your phone NAB was then saying we're going to introduce stable coins and mark my words, I'm putting it out here on the live global stage, ANZ or Westpac will be next to say they're introducing something. What are they doing? They're gently easing you into crypto. Then the last one will probably say a CBDC and the CBDC will then go across all four of them. They'll say, well, we already had Bitcoin, so now we're just going to add a CBDC and NAB will say, well, we already had a stable coin, so now we're going to incorporate a CBDC. And the other one said, well, we already had NFTs, so now we'll just incorporate a CBDC. They're grooming you. They are all grooming you, getting ready for crypto. Crypto is going nowhere. Crypto is here. It's like anyone saying, oh, we're not going to use the internet. Yes, you are. You don't have a choice. We all had to use the internet, whether we liked it or not. Even if you were a farmer, you look at some of the technology that farmers use around the internet with plowing their fields and watching what's happening around the world. The best farmers in the world, which... I use farmers as an example because we see it as a very hands-on industry. They're using the internet like there's no tomorrow. Now, obviously, in an office, we talk about using the internet. But my point is when it comes to the internet of money, every business is going to use the internet of money. Every economy is going to use the internet of money. There's no escape from this. We are all going to use the internet of money, irrespective of what the mainstream says. Stream. I think I said stream. Okay. Crypto Fear and Greed Index. Looking at the Fear and Greed Index, we are currently <laughs> at greed. It's a new record. We've been at fear last month at 28, neutral last week at 53, neutral yesterday at 52, and we are feeling 
Greedy. Congratulations. We are at Greedy. How long has it been? Let's scroll down. How long has it been since we've been at this height? We'll go, we'll go to the max. Let's go to the max to see how long has it been. The last time we were at this height was back in the 24th of March, 2022. So less than a year. Gosh, doesn't time move quickly? It feels like years ago since we were at this top, this level at greed. But according to the data I'm looking at, it was around the 28th of March, 2022, which is less than a year ago that we saw a fear and greed index this high. Things move so quickly, as I've mentioned before many times on this channel. One human year, no, one crypto year is like seven human years. It, it just, everything moves so quickly. And I'll even say that with the, the, the Sam bankrupt fraud thing. Let's just look at the technicals quickly before I get into your comments. So as you can see, this is where the scam bankrupt fraud thing happens. So th this point right here. And it took us, let me drop a horizontal ray first so I can do it very accurately. I'll draw a, uh, yeah, give me a horizontal ray. So it was about here. We'll punch that out there. So there's your horizontal ray. Now I'm going to measure how long it took for us to get over the Sam bankrupt fraud saga. It took us 67 days. Now think about that. When when you had the GFC, the global financial crisis, and you might say, well, hang on, the GFC was the whole world. Well, crypto is the whole world as well. Yes, it's a smaller market share of all the financial systems in the world, but you know, Bitcoin's not just here. Bitcoin's everywhere. And it, we're talking about the whole crypto markets. It took years for us to get over the GFC, but it took crypto 67 days to get over the biggest collapse in crypto in its history, arguably bigger than FTX. It's kind of hard to read how big FTX was in comparison to this because less people were in the, um, sorry, not FTX, Mount, uh, Mount Gox. Less people were in the Mount Gox crash when that happened. And although the amount of Bitcoin that is still held up in Mount Gox is arguably worth a lot more than what we saw at the moment at this time, it's very difficult to gauge that because smaller market, less coins, one exchange, not so many people affected, less money and so forth. The FTX collapse, a lot more economic history, a lot more financial maturity, a lot more people involved, a lot more exchanges went down, a lot of countries going in there. There was a lot of people involved in the FTX saga, directly or indirectly. And it took us 67 days to get back to where the saga hit us. And now look where we are, where we're going up to this area here. So again, this is the analogy. And I'm, I just make up numbers here where I'm saying one one crypto year is like seven human years but it does move so quickly at a minimum even if you don't want to say even if you don't want to acknowledge that you have to acknowledge that crypto markets don't sleep i'm streaming to you live from australia on a sunday night and the markets are still moving you go to any other banking market in the world provided it's not actually that'll be shut right now because it's a sunday everywhere in the world because Australia's at the head of the timeline and even if it was there's a couple who are still in saturday all the markets are closed crypto markets aren't closed and as a result, that's why you have this velocity of the markets. The barrier to entry is much lower. You need less money to get in here. But then the velocity of the markets is much higher because they never sleep. So, and, and then you might take it a step further. Because they're such small markets compared to the rest of the markets, like just go to the real estate markets, so the derivatives markets, the gold markets, the cash markets, the debt markets. This is just such a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of what's happening in the world around us. And all we need is 1%. Now, I foresee it's going to be more like 30% to 50 to 80% over years that will come into these markets. But just 1%. We have just 1% coming into this. It's out of control. Okay. Can I get some more? Is my, is my audio bad? Is it still? Can I get another radio check? It's crackling. Let me see if I can fix this. Hang on a second. I'm going to... I'll tell you what I do. I've got a backup mic. How's this? Hang on a second. Yeah, this is my backup mic. It's not as good, but I'll go from this mic to because audio is everything. All right. I've I've just swapped mics. How does that sound? Can I get a radio check? So this is my Rode Australian made microphone. The other one was my Shaw. SM7B. 
but this one should sound a lot better. Can I get a radio check? Okay, let me see what's coming out here. Uh, going further down in the comments, it's better, much better, 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 great. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Big ranting with a horrible mic. Remember, if you want to make um, a YouTube channel or do anything when it comes to uh, uh, audio and visual, people really focus on the cameras, but the, the truth is you want a really good mic. And you can see if you're doing a live show, you want a backup mic because that's the first time I've ever had to swap live during a show. First time for the year, first time ever. Thank you for your patience. Everyone's saying it's much better, 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 better. <laughs> Clintrons loves Rode. Yeah, Rode is massive. Ah, Sven. There you go. So Sven120 by 6 has said, ANZ already said making stable coin ages ago. Okay, thanks, Sven. I, I haven't seen that. Um, Dre has said, Rode for the win. Is the difference, a bit of technical talk here. Okay, so here's my SM7B, right? That's a really expensive microphone but you need a mixer for it. And I think, I actually think it's, it's not the microphone. I actually think it's my mixer. I've had troubles with the mixer. This one, my road is just a USB plug-in and you don't have a mixer. It, it's not actually quite as good quality when you don't have the crackling, uh, but it certainly is a, a very good microphone. You see a lot of guys using um, roads all over the place. Brown bear. <laughs> Sound is honey. <laughs> uh hilarious ollie hi adam hi fam great to have you here and you know thank you all for being here as well i'm, I'm very honored that you're here how many have we got in the chat can you all give us a like um particularly as i've now fixed up the sound i'm sorry about that crackling that must have been so annoying i can't stand listening to podcasts um that don't have good sound even scout has said what's with the audio okay let's move on from the audio mess um julia said what a miracle clucky is yes she's sitting right here I'll She's asleep. I'll bring her on a bit later, but God, what an incredible chicken. You know, when it comes to animals, um, it, it's very personal. So if you have put down an animal, and some of you had shared your story with me when you had to put down uh, our dogs and cats and chickens, and a lot of you shared with me, and I'm very grateful that you did because it's very difficult. You know, what do you do? You, you've got this animal that the, the vet says they're suffering, so put them down. But you're like, well, do I give them a fighting chance? And it was a very difficult situation. I thought, well, at the end of the day, I'm, I made a moral contract with my, with everyone who lives on the estate. I will do everything in my power to give you your best life possible and protect you from anything that can hurt you. So I have immense security, you know, like from snakes or foxes or anything. I, I've got people in my um, area. They've had all of their chickens demolished in one night by foxes. My property is so secure, I have never, ever lost a single chicken to a fox, ever. Dino plays part of it, but I've also secured the perimeter very well, so I've never lost a chicken to a fox, touch wood. But when it came to Clucky, my number one chicken, I'm like, I, I'm going to give you the deal. The deal was, I will do everything in my power to give you the best life possible and maintain your life to the best standards and protect you from anything that can hurt you. And that includes putting putting it down. So I, I made the call and, and only one person said, you should probably put it down. And I wasn't offended by it because I, I get it. It's, it's difficult. You know, I really thought, do I put it down? But after four or five days of being unconscious and I'm, you know, changing her dressing, you know, I've got like, a, you know, those pee pads for dogs. I put her in that in a crate with a towel. And I, I've got a little syringe, not with a needle, but just with the, the syringe itself to inject water into her mouth and I keep her clean and I change her dressing and I keep her warm and, I, and day four she just woke up she just sat up and I'm like my god imagine I put her down um, imagine I had killed this chicken and uh yeah she's she's right next to me now and passed out I want to say passed out here let me just yeah she's cool she's just sitting here I'll show you a bit later okay let's move it forward and oh, thank you for asking Wild TR, Wild TR. Any thoughts on why Pulse is taking so long to launch? Is Complex or is Richard waiting for a market bottom? Um, well, I hope you've seen my interview that I did with CC from Liquid Loans. And I asked him that. I said, what's going on? And basically, I don't know if you know, but they've had to start from square one, not from square one, but they've started rebuilding it. 
So I don't know, you know, uh, look, some people have said, how do I buy your sacrifice? So you can't get to Pulse Chain now, but many people want to buy someone else's sacrifice. And there's in fact a market for that. So let's say you, you've lost faith in the product and you've lost faith in the project. You could in fact sell your sacrifice to the open market. And I know a lot of people would pay top dollar for that. But equally, if you sold your sacrifice and it came out, let's say you sold your sacrifice for, I don't know, I'll make up a number, a million dollars, but then later it came, it launched and it went to $10 million. Well, you've just foregone $9 million. But if it went to nothing and you sold it for a million dollars, that's a pretty good hedge of your bet. So there is a market out there where people do, in fact, want to buy these sacrifices. Uh, however, Look, it's a big risk. Um, to answer your question, though, I think before the launching, it's, it's just complex. They haven't finished it yet. And it's a fair question when people said if it was so easy just to fork Ethereum and go to proof of stake rather than proof of work, why didn't Ethereum do it itself? Now, part of the answer is it was difficult. But the other part was there's a lot of politics in the Ethereum Foundation. What do I mean by that? It's not one person. It's a foundation. And then you've got the miners. And why do miners matter? Because miners are making a fortune. And if, you know, think of anything or anyone who's making a lot of money from the system that's in place, take Fiat, for example, <laughs> it's going to come up against a lot of resistance when it migrates over to a newer, fairer, cheaper, efficient system. So with Ethereum going to proof of work to proof of stake, it wasn't as easy as just forking it for those two reasons. One, it's complicated. And two, it would cost people a lot of future fortunes. When is it going to launch? I don't know. In some ways, I get a little bit nervous, but at the ultimate, at the end of the day, I've made my sacrifice. I've made my move, and I'm just waiting for this thing to move forward. So time will tell, my friend. Time will tell. Christy says, send Adam some love. Hit the like button. Thank you. Oh, I think someone hit, gave me a super chat. Oh, my God. Hang on. Super chats, of course, get priority. Why? It's a free market. I haven't missed you. I know there's a super chat out there. Where are you, super chat? There you are, Christy. Oh, was you? <laughs> what what are the odds? I've got hundreds of comments here. What are the odds that I would click on Chris D for the last one? And he gave it was in different parts. Chris D has given me seven ninety nine for the new mixer fund. Thank you. I actually do need a new mixer. A mixer. I've got a Tascam. It's never been good. It's always given me troubles. I'm putting that directly to the new mixer fund so I can bring in my honey microphone, which is like someone has said. Sound is honey. I'll bring in the other microphone. Over at Shadow D, someone who's got a lot of pets. It's hard, mate. Yeah, thanks, Shadow D. Uh, I appreciate your empathy. It sucks. Uh, Clintron said, such a soldier, secure the perimeter. You bet your backside, Clintrons. You should don't try to come into my perimeter. <laughs> I mean it. I can't tell you too much because you don't, you don't give away your secrets, but at a minimum, you know I've got a Doberman, but that's just one of my weapons, shall we say. Jolita. Ronnie Esco, I thought it had something to do with the password manager. I think you're talking amongst yourselves. That's cool. Okay. Uh, Clintrons, you can't really sell your sacrifice. The buyer would have to trust that you didn't keep the private keys to your what that you're, you're dead right, Clintrons. Yeah, absolutely. The, when If you were going to sell your sacrifice, it it's so risky. You know, selling it would be okay, but buying someone else's sacrifice, how do you prove that the other person hasn't kept the keys? So, so you're right. It's, I mean, there's a market still out there. Some people would still play the game. And if you met someone and you knew them and you, you know, wrote a contract and you shook hands, but even then, if it went missing, you could, how would you prove that they stole your money? It, it gets very complicated. Now, also we'll say this with sacrifices. Some people, excuse me, I'm really hot. I spent hours in the sauna today. I've been working out trying to fix my leg so i'm trying to do all these other exercises except for just running so many people believe that if you sacrifice there's no tax burden and i spoke to my accountant about this and many of you have asked me if you sell if you sacrifice money to get you know pulse chain um pulse x liquid loans and a lot of people are doing now this with this sacrifice they're saying well because you've given away your money and you don't have it there's no tax burden well, my accountant disagrees, and I trust my accountant. He's very good, and I pay him a lot of money to do the great work that he does. The sheer fact that you've disposed of an asset means that, in fact, 
you've you've triggered a cell. So a sacrifice in accounting terms, uh, hang on, let me preempt this. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not giving you tax advice. I'm not giving you accounting advice. Speak to your accountant or tax office or both. I'm now repeating a conversation that I had with my accountant, who is an accountant, who is a tax advisor, who is qualified, and he told me this. It's all hearsay. I have to say that to cover myself legally. The second that you dispose of an asset through a sale or a swap or a sacrifice, which is a new word that the crypto land has just made up, that is the equivalent of a sell. And that sell therefore triggers a tax event. So if you've sacrificed $100,000, I'll make up numbers, for Pulse or PulseX or liquid loans, according to my accountant, which I challenge you to speak to your accountant, you have just triggered a sale. So this is where it gets really bad. Let's say you sacrificed $100,000 and you now have a tax bill of $50,000 and the project goes to zero. Well, guess what you're left with? All n- None of the crypto that you've sacrificed because you just sacrificed it and it's gone to Louis Vuitton handbags or whatever. And you've now got a $50,000 tax debt. Why? Because when you sell $100,000, if you're at the top tax bracket and you've had it for less than 12 months, you owe the tax man half. Depending on your tax zone, how long you held it for and all those. But to keep numbers simple, you're either going to own 50% or 25%. So you could, in fact, lose all your crypto in the sacrifice and owe the tax man 50 to 25, off 25 to $50,000. And you've got nothing left. So just, just look into that. Don't believe someone who tells you on the internet and don't believe me either i'm just some dude on the internet go find out yourself speak to your accountant say if i dispose of an asset and i use the verb sell or swap or sacrifice what's the tax burden and i'm almost certain that he'll say that's the same as a sell you owe the tax man money i hope that hasn't hurt anyone's feelings but that's what my accountant told me and hurt my feelings that's for sure (laughs) okay i want to promote This from our crypto sister, Gracie. So Gracie, I can see you in the comments and we love our crypto sister. Now she has an amazing product made by an amazing woman. I'm not getting paid for this, by the way. There's no money for this. I just really like crypto, my crypto sister. We love Gracie. She's in the comments. Gracie, say hi to everyone. You can see Miss Muse. We've got a little pack here. 197 Australian dollars. That's $197. You get this little Valentine's pack. And remember, Valentine's Day is on the 14th of February. That's not far away at all. Get in there. Get this little pack. Help our crypto sister. Boys, give it to your girlfriend. Or girls, give it to your girlfriend. Or girls, give it to your boys. Moisturizing creams. Do not. (laughs) Do not discriminate. I moisturize daily. Have done for years. I'm actually a 75-year-old man. Can't you tell? I'm kidding. But yeah, get into it. Uh, I'll leave a link to this site. In fact, I'll put it in the comments right now because I have God mode, therefore I can do it. There's the link. Go check out oceanmuse.com.au. Gracie said hi there twice. And uh, check out that pack. Okay, we don't advertise on this channel, but I can say that only because I'm not getting paid for this and I love my crypto sister appropriately. And it's time to move on. Let's check out the crypto rankings. First of all, we have the big, big fat orange man at one. Look at that price, 23384 Go, you good thing. Ethereum 2, Tether 3, USD coin 4, Binance coin 5. That's two stable coins in the top four. And Binance coin. So, yeah, I, I paused there for a second because, remember, you've got Binance coin, which is the native token, and then you have Binance USD, which is a stable coin. So Bitcoin 1, Ethereum 2, Tether 3, USD coin 4, Binance coin 5, XRP 6. Well done, XRP, for holding that line. Binance USD, their stable coin at seven. So we have three stable coins in the top seven. Cardano at eight. Well done, Cardano. Dogecoin at nine. Polygon Matic still in that position 10. OKB 11. Solana at position 12. You know, how many hacks and restarts have we seen of the Solana blockchain? There's some people who absolutely hate Solana with a passion. I don't think I hate Solana. Hate's a very strong word. My father said you should, should never hate. But there's a lot of people who do hate Solana, and I can start to see why. I haven't sold my position in Solana because I think there is so much hype around this coin that even even if, I'm not saying it is, 
probably is. But even if it is a turd burger, if it can make it to the crypto summer, you're going to see you're going to see it get back to its all time high. But I think it's a bit of an arms race at the moment because we need to ensure that we can make it to the crypto summer. Um, and I was concerned when we saw, I, I've said this a couple of times, when Raul Pal, who I like, just said it in an interview with Tom Bilal, just randomly, he wove Solana into the conversation and it just, it really st stuck out. It didn't make sense at all. And it, that just, I'm like, ooh. And, you know, I'll put it out here now. Maybe, maybe it was like a Kevin O'Leary, Sam bankrupt fraud thing. I, I know that's a big call. I'm not saying it is the fact, but Kevin O'Leary really loves FTT and FTX. Weird. Okay. And you saw what happened. Then Raul Powell randomly loves Solana. And you can see what's happening with Solana. Chance of coincidence? I have no idea. You just, when you live in this space, you start to see these patterns and it sometimes just doesn't feel right. And, you know, I really liked Kevin O'Leary as well in the past, but now I've got no respect for him. And I still really like Raul Powell now. And I just hope he doesn't turn into an O'Leary. I really hope he doesn't, but I don't know. But we're, we're all out here together just trying to get through this. And there's some good people and bad people. Moving further down, Liquid Staked Ether or Steth up to 13, Polkadot down to 14, Litecoin, go you good thing, up two positions to number 15. I keep talking about Litecoin. It's not going to make you rich. Well, it could if you put a lot of money into it. Well, it could make you poor as well, but ultimately Litecoin continues to deliver. It's one of the OGs. It's a simple coin. It doesn't it doesn't pretend to do something different. It doesn't pretend to be groundbreaking. It is just literally a lighter version of Bitcoin. And if you've ever mined, if you've mined Bitcoin on the SHA-256 algorithm and Litecoin on the script algorithm, you get it. You get it because your SHA-256 algorithm miners they're screaming their heads off and they you can there's heat pouring out of it and it's just like it's such a like running your car redlining like imagine parking your car in a driveway putting it in neutral and just putting your foot to the floor and just screaming the i'm trying to watch my language here you know what I'm, the word i want to use out of your car that's what mining on the sha 256 algorithm is like now imagine the same car sitting in a driveway, you put it in neutral and you just leave it idly. That's what Litecoin's like. But it's still doing the same number of transactions. It's just a really cool coin. Uh, a little interruption here from our brother, Snoop Doggy Dog. How are you from the United States of America? He says, <laughs> Soldier Evans says, I moisturize daily, brackets. We already know, bro. <laughs> I'm not going to read that. Uh, it's a soldier. Snoop Doggy Dog is one of our crypto brothers. He is a legend. Um, read the comments below because <laughs> I don't want to get blocked here. From Not from you, from our good friends at YouTube. Moving further down the charts as we're all over the shop here today, we have Shiba Inu at 16, Avalanche at 17. Big things happening on Avalanche. Tron, the old Tron at 18. Die at 19. Wrap Bitcoin at 20. Cosmos at 21. Chainlink, just talking about Chainlink, up two positions to 22. Hex down one position to 23, currently trading at 2.6 cents. Optimism up to 24. The open network down two positions to 25. Unised Leo 26, Monero 27, Uniswap Protocol 28, Ethereum Classic still in there at 29, Aptos. We've had that in the charts a fair bit over the last, I think biggest gain of last week was it? That's down to, or at position 30, Bitcoin Cash 31, Stellar 32. ApeCoin33, Quant QNT, as I was talking about, you're up posi one position to 34. Near Protocol down to 35, Kronos CRO36, Falcoin37, Lido down 38, Algorand39, and VChain Thor at 40. Okay, let's get back into your comments. <laughs> Purple Dingo grabbing another beer. Good man. I have one with you, but I'm trying to stay buff. Snoop Doggy Doug, remain as always proud of you for all that you do here on here for all who need it the most. Snoop, you're too kind to me. Get, everyone send a little love message to Snoop Doggy Doug. He's he's a veteran. He's an American brother. Very smart, very kind, very funny. Always makes me laugh. Very insightful. <laughs> I love having you here. I wish I could reverse um, Super Chat. Wouldn't that be fun? Actually, there you go. There's a business model for you. You know how sometimes I run competitions here or I'll ask you something and I'll send you money and I say, send you, send me your preferred coin address 
and it can be any coin except from now on no longer ERC20 tokens because then I have to pay gas fees on it or if you want an ERC20 token I'm taking that out of the bounty that I'm paying you imagine there was right now one way I could I could pay you because right now would that be great does anyone know of that is there is there a way that I can be streaming and I can invert the payment instead of you giving me a super chat I can give you a super reply how can we do this? Is it out there? If not, make the business and you'll be rich. We'll have to see. I know the technology exists. <laughs> Look at Ollie. Good on you, Ollie. We love you, Snoop Duggy Duck. <laughs> there you go, Snoop. I've made you a star. You are a star. Grace has said hi, Snoop. Aptos, now on coins. Uh, moving further on. Uh, Grace Novak. Gracie, she's running the show tonight. Fruitcakes, these Sultanas. Very good. She's talking about the Sultanas, the, the Salarians. Moving further down. Here we go. Degenerate. I love this name. Stokesy, apologies. I'll have to miss the show. Family emergency. Catch up later. That's all right, man. Hope you're all right. Um, I hope you are as bullish as Peter, <laughs> as Peter North on AVN, 19-year-old newcomer. Okay. Peter North is an ongoing joke in this community. Degenerate. That is hilarious. I won't go into it because it's a little bit above 18 but i hope everything's all right with the family and we'll be recording so we'll be here later okay let's get over to some of the crypto rankings as i hide your comment there to clear it up okay let's go on to the biggest losers over the week that was first of all the biggest losers was oh gmx again let's refresh this that can't be right let's refresh this okay biggest losers over the that's better that's better you start to see these patterns. Okay, so the biggest loser over the week that was, just after all my talk about the metaverse, was the sandbox. Only 5%, absolutely nothing in the crypto land. Tokenized exchange, the second biggest loser, down 4.7%. Lido Dow down, I'm always saying that. Lido Dow down 4.2%. I can only remember one time saying Lido Dow up, and it really tripped me over because I always say Lido Dow down. And I actually had to go the other way. You're down 4.2%. Hidera H bar, down 4.2%. C ETH. You're down 4.2. Maker, down 4%. This is nothing. Synthetics, network, down 3.4. And now we see the pivot, my crypto brothers and sisters. Terra Luna Classic and Luna, down 2.6% each. I've told you, be careful with that. I know some of you cowboys are swing trading it. Go for it. Nothing illegal, nothing immoral, just very risky. And I'm staying the hell away from that thing. But some people want to trade it. We then have Solana down 1.4%. Ethereum down 1.4%. That's weird with Ethereum. It's very odd to me that Ethereum, Ethereum's down. In my opinion, Ethereum is grossly undervalued. Now, I know some of you will be saying, yeah, but Pulse is better. Well, Pulse doesn't exist. It's not there. And others will be saying, well, Solana's better. Well, they keep restarting it. It keeps getting hacked and it keeps breaking. So just go on the numbers. Go on the stats. What's the best smart coin out there at the moment? And note I said at the moment, it's Ethereum. It's got the biggest market share. Most people have built on it. Even Richard Hart has built on it himself with Hex. And it's only $1,600. And, and it's got a reducing supply and an increasing demand. And you've got this burn function and you've got an update. EIP has the 1559. Is that the right one? That's recently happened. The London hard fork. And then we're having, is it Shanghai that's up next? Uh, comments. What's the next update for Ethereum? All of these things are moving forward for Ethereum. But... The market has spoken and the market has said it's down 1.4%. So not much movement in these coins over the week on the negative. Let me just read your comments to see what the next hard the update is. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ronnie's asked me what wrapped Bitcoin is. Yes, I will. Okay. Wrapped Bitcoin. In the simplest way I can say what wrapped Bitcoin is, it's actually providing equity or backing behind something that you're doing on another network. So let's say I want to build something on Ethereum, but I want something to back what I'm doing on Ethereum. And I and I say, oh, I've got these road coins. And it's like, well, I don't really like your road coins. That doesn't really back. And they say, well, how about I back it up with Bitcoin? And it's like, oh, I like Bitcoin. I'll, I'll take that as a backing. So what you do is you take Bitcoin and you wrap it which is kind of locking it and you put it into this other ecosystem as a, as a wrapped asset. And you, you can have more than wrapped Bitcoin, but people like Bitcoin and they trust it more. So you can wrap the security 
not not security as in the uh, digital security you can wrap the value of that bitcoin and use it as a backing on what you're doing on another chain it's very you're going to see these wrapped assets in more places unless this is where you won't do it if we have layer two and layer three solutions where everyone will be building on top of the bitcoin network network you won't need wrapped bitcoin because the value will be in that network it's when you're building on top of other networks but you want to you want to have the value or the backing of something bigger than Roadcoin or USDC or USDT or even the network that you're building on itself, you'll use wrapped Bitcoin for that. It's a, it's a really fascinating way of ensuring that there's value held in what you're doing on other chains. Uh, Clintrons has confirmed Shanghai upgrade. Thank you. The Shanghai upgrade. And yes, Craig said it's deflationary. That is, we're talking about Ethereum. It's deflationary. As in, the amount of supply is burning down. Therefore, it's a deflationary asset, which is the opposite to what fiat is, where the amount that they keep making keeps going up. So it's an inflationary asset. I may have said the words backwards before. Uh, Craig Patton says, I think more people will invest in ETH once they can withdraw staked coins. Yeah, but <clears throat> good point. So if you've locked up your... Actually, very good point. So if you've got 32 ETH of your own and you lock them up, the, the challenge for that is you can't get them out at the moment. And that creates a lot less confidence. But if you join someone else's staking pool, so to be honest with you, I stake my Ethereum with CoinSpot. And why do I do that? Because I don't have to take 32 of my own ETH, stake it individually, and as you said, Craig, lock it up and I can't get it out. If I stake it with CoinSpot, I can move it in and out as fast as, and I had to actually do it the other day. I, I had this big stake in there and I had to, I'll tell you what I actually did. I actually, one of my um, stakes on Hex expired and I had to end stake and then restake and I needed gas fees for it. So I had to get Ethereum out of my wallet from CoinSpot and put it onto MetaMask and I had to end the stake and it allowed me to end the stake. But what's the downside of this? Well, it's a, it's a lower percentage. So if you take your ETH, your 32 ETH, and you stake it yourself and you lock it up and you don't move it in and out, you're going to get a high percentage. But you can't get it out. But if you do it with something like CoinSpot, it's a lower percentage, but you can get it out. So if you're not sure what to do, I would say just diversify. Just put some here and some there. And if you don't like CoinSpot, we'll do it with, I would say do it with SwiftX, but they've cancelled their own functions at the moment. Just saying. You've got nothing against SwiftX. They're nice people. But... They're shutting down all their earn functions. So if you've got coins on SwiftX, I'm not having a go at them. I'm just saying, as a matter of fact, they are no longer going to offer earn. I think it, when does it end? I think it was ending at the end of this month. I think there's like two more days. I can't remember the exact date, but SwiftX, which is Australia's, I think, second biggest trading platform, they said we're no longer going to give you earn, which is staking rewards. The coin spot is. So I'm not telling you what to do with your money, but if you've got it sitting on SwiftX, and it's not earning any interest, why don't you put it somewhere where it is? I'm not telling you what to do with your money. I'm just saying, just saying. Moving on. We can confirm it's Shanghai. <laughs> Let's go down. The biggest gainers over the week that was. Okay, let, let, gather around, kids. It's big gain time. The biggest gainer over the week that was, was, again, Aptos. Aptos up 55.2%, currently trading at $18.28. Well done, Aptos. You were the biggest gainer. Congratulations. The next biggest gainer was BTSE token up 54%. What a week in crypto. Followed by Phantom, FTM up 37.7% and Axie Infinity. <laughs> why am I laughing? Grace, you know why I'm laughing. Some of you out there also know why I'm laughing about Grace. Uh, sorry, about Axie Infinity. is because about four or five weeks ago, everything's moving so quickly, I took a big risk and I bought Axie Infinity at pretty much a bottom, not an all-time bottom, but a bottom of this crypto winter. And ever since I bought that thing, I already had some, but I calculated the risk and I really liked the staking rewards and I bought a big bag of this stuff. And ever since then, it has continued to pump and it's giving me 80% staking rewards. I'm not telling you to go buy it. I'm just saying what I did. I don't always win. Sometimes I lose big, but I didn't lose on that one. Followed by 
Radix, congratulations. XRD, you're the biggest, next biggest gainer, up 23.9%. Another coin. Thank you to the community. The community has told me about Radix. I looked into it. I even put it out there, I think last week, as the dark horse. And there you are, up 23.9%. There was your dark horse. Had you followed that, not that I tell you what to do with your money, it's your money, you make a choice, but 23.9% followed by eCash, XEC up 23.9%. Also, Gala. Gala making a bit of a comeback. I have Gala. I would suggest you look into Gala. Gala is an interesting token. I bought this, I think, two or three years ago, and it looked like it was going through a rough patch, but they're still developing on it. So well done, Gala. Oh, that was the other thing with Solana. Didn't they go from like 1,000 um, devs down to like 20 or something? They lost like 90% of their development workforce on Solana. What does that tell you? When you've got devs picking up and saying, we're out, and they're going to another chain, how does Solana even have a price? I don't know. It's crypto. Anything can happen. Moving further along, along Avalanche, AVAX up 22.2%. Well done. GMX up 20%. You Was that the biggest loser last week? I believe it was. You're up now 20%. Convex Finance, CVX up 19.4%. Polygon Matic, well done, up 17.4%. Great week in crypto. Mina up 17.2%. Osmosis, 16.1%. Trust Wallet, 15.3%. The Graph, GRT up 13.6%. VET, my old friend VeChain. I like VeChain. Really love it. I just hope it works. I really hope v chain works because it's just such a good concept it's about logistical supply chains verifying what you're buying from aircraft parts to european vehicle parts to baby formula to medicine to yogurt temperature throughout its supply chain v chain there you go there's your dark horse for the week i love v chain some people have knocked it but as i about two years ago i did a video on v chain renault BMW and someone else was partnering with VeChain. Now, hang on a second. Let me just stop myself there. As we explained at the beginning of this show, when someone claims that they are partnering with a coin, you really have to be careful about the news because VeChain or someone will go out there and say, yeah, we're partnering with BMW. But when you actually look between the lines, it might be like, oh, you actually had a conversation and you bought one of their cars. So have you partnered with BMW? Well, you bought their car and you had a conversation and you put a V-Chain sticker on the side of the BMW. Now, I'm not saying that's what happened with the V-Chain and BMW. I am saying that's what can happen when this news comes to light. They say, oh, we've done this and it's not really what has happened. So just always, when you hear about partnerships, get right into the nitty gritty and don't just take it from me or anyone or Twitter in particular, anyone saying, oh, they've partnered, it's all happening. So please just be careful. But VeChain is definitely my dark horse for the week. I love the coin. It's only 2.4 cents at the moment. Uh, it's got competitors, but we'll see what happens. Arweave, you're up 12.5%. ICP, Internet Computer, up 12.2%. BitDAO, up to 11.9%. OKB, up 11.6%. ApeCoin, up 10.9%. Flare, you're up 10.8%. IOTA, with a code of MyOTA, the only coin I know of where the ticker is longer than the name. Incredible. You're up 10.3%. Clay, up 9.6%. Rocket Pool, g'day. You're up 9.6. Curve down, up 9.4. Toncoin up 9.2. And Godzilla up 9%. Another coin I like a lot. Oh, and interesting. A similar price to VeChain. The thing is with Zillica, is that they've actually got a really good community behind them and they actually continue to develop on it. And there's a lot of hype. When I say hype, it's not like one of these fake hypes where like, we're a better Bitcoin or we're a better this or we're a better that. They just keep on doing their thing. Some really good minds behind Zillica. Been around for a long time. Great community. I like the coin. I've got a huge bag of the stuff. Um, and I, I think it's got a future. And was it Pepsi? <laughs> the, the, the theme of tonight must be bloody partnerships. So I believe Zillica was partnering with Pepsi. Uh, I don't know what happened with that. I don't know if they're still partnered with Pepsi. But as I keep saying, look in to the details to see who Zillica is partnering with. And remember, when we say partnering, you can sign a deal today and then you can break the deal later. You might have an exit fee or a clause where you can get out or you give 30 days notice. So just because someone has partnered with someone today doesn't mean they're going to partner with them tomorrow. You might look at marriage. You sign a contract saying till death do us part. Nah, well, let's just get a divorce. 
the same with business. It can actually happen that way as well. So just look into that. Julie has said, go Zilliqa. I see you are a god's... No, sorry. Julie has said, go V-Chain. Sorry. I'm ranting about Zilliqa and I see V-Chain come up, but check it out as well. As we go further down the list, we also have uh, Near Protocol. You're up 9%. Filecoin up 8.9%. Pancake Swap. Haven't seen this one for a while. Up 8.6%. Pancake Swap. I've used Pancake Swap a few times. Essentially, a, a decentralized exchange. Is it really decentralized though? It's so hard to know what is decentralized. One thing that I got out of my listening in the week over um, FTX, there is a belief that the whole purpose of FTX was to get your data. So think about when you sign up for. I don't know, email or something. They get you. They get your data. You are the product. When we go to file coin, sorry, all over the shop. When we go to FTX, apparently, allegedly, supposedly, the reason why FTX was created was so you would sign up, you would hand over your data, and you now have this exchange or body, whatever the hell they are, that has millions upon millions of people's names, date of birth, address, bank account, what can they do with that data? And the more I look into that, the more I'm like, oh man, that that's that's possible. It's probable. I don't know, but what are your thoughts? Was FTX created not just to rip? I mean, there's, in my mind, there's no way that Sam Bankrupt Fraud made that thing. He was the face of it, and he was this kid that was thrown into the front. But when you look into the what's happening in the legal um, hearings at the moment there are some huge names in that thing and a lot of them their names have been suppressed it's like well hang on a second why you, you're a major investor you invested in this thing it's the biggest collapse in crypto history and we're not allowed to know who you are but we can know who's who scam bankrupt fraud is don't you think it's a little bit convenient do you think that's a little bit odd that certain people and, and here's another thing that's odd the bail for sam bankrupt fraud was $250 million. And the go is, you, he had to put 10% forward. So that's $25 million. And of the $25 million, his parents put up a $4 million house as collateral. So where's the last $21 million came from? Like, where'd the $21 million come from? To get him from the Bahamas back to America, of which he apparently flew first class, by the way. Where... Where did that money come from? I don't know. Um, let me know. Uh, Craig. <laughs> did they get a, a burger from Macca's as well? Ace Cabra. Uncle Adam looked into Particia blockchain. No, never heard of it. But I will if you recommend it because you're part of the community. Ronnie. What time and date is used to work out the best and worst performers given that crypto doesn't close? Ah, uh, Okay. The answer to that is, we. Oh, I, I have heard this one. That's a really good question. So first of all, they get the aggregate data from a whole lot of data sets. So when you're looking at this data, like on CoinSpot or um, CoinGecko or Nomics, what they do is they get volume-weighted data from all the exchanges. What does volume-weighted mean? So if I sell a Bitcoin for $100,000, and I only sell one of them on Atom Exchange, but then Binance sells a million Bitcoins or 10,000 Bitcoins for $20,000. Because they had a greater volume, there is more volume on, or there's more weight, more volume weighted data on Binance because they sold way more Bitcoins than I did on Atom Exchange. So the way they get the prices that you're looking at and the percentage changes is by getting volume weighted data from multiple data sets. And the way they, the, by, because it's volume weighted, it ensures that you don't have some rando like me saying, oh, I sold Bitcoin for $10 million to myself. Therefore, Bitcoin is now valued at $9 million going off your data of selling a few for $20,000. That's where they get the numbers from. But I, I can't remember, Ronnie, when it comes to the actual time. I think it's somewhere in America. I do recall years ago asking this question. There is an answer to it, but I don't know it. If anyone knows it, can you leave the comments below? 
Julia has said that she likes the liquor. Too. Julia says she likes the liquor too. Thank you, Julie, for saving me there. Because <laughs> before I said you just said go V chain. Uh, Ronnie again says, "Did you watch Doco of Tom Gillespie and on Hexicons and the time value of money?" No, I didn't, but I'll have to check it out. Leave a link in there. I oh, know you can't leave the link in there because uh, I have God mode. El Honkla, what's your thoughts on Hedron since speaking with Alex? Look, I. I thought Alex was a really good guy. Uh, I bought some Hedron. Uh, I say Hedron, he says Hedron. It's his project, so we'll go with what he says. Ultimately, the issue with a lot of these projects, okay, I'm I'm sometimes nervous about projects that are dependent on other projects. So let's use Chainlink as an example. Would Chainlink exist if Ethereum didn't exist? Would Chainlink succeed if Ethereum didn't succeed because Chainlink, as an example, yes, it can do other things, but primarily Chainlink was built to empower Ethereum. And you might say the same with Polygon Matic as a layer two solution. Now, you might say the same with Liquid Loans. So you see, you're probably cringing that I'm talking about this. If Liquid Loans was built to empower Pulse Chain and Pulse Chain never launches, how does that affect Liquid Loans? Now, it could go to another chain, but my point I'm trying to make here is that some chains are built to do their own thing and other coins or chains or projects are built to help another chain or project. And to me, that just creates another layer of risk because now I'm not just investing on the success of this solution. I'm investing also on the, on the chain that this solution is intended for. So when it comes to Hedron, yes, a Hedron can operate it, um, in itself. And I just bought Hedron without having anything to do with Hex. I mean, I do have Hex, but I didn't do what was needed of Hex to get the Hedron. I just went and bought it itself. So in that way, it can be a speculative asset. But when I when I do this investing, I'm just thinking, oh, do I really want something that is dependent on something else? Now you might, let, let's go outside of crypto. Let's say, I'll do this very, this is a bad example, but we'll roll with it because it's simple. Let's say you're going to invest in car tires. You're building, you're putting your money into a car tire um, manufacturer. Well, what happens if cars are no longer made anymore? You've just built all of this infrastructure and money around tires that were for cars, and now cars don't exist. Now, of course, I know that's an extreme example because cars aren't going anywhere anytime soon. But let's make it more precise. Let's say you make car tires only for Hondas. You say, I'm going to make a car manufacturing, a tire manufacturing plant that only makes tires for Hondas. Well, Hondas competing with Toyota and Ford and GM and uh, Kia and Daewoo, or, which is now uh, Hyundai. So all of these other companies. What if that one company collapses? So th that's the only thing I consider when I'm investing in these other platforms. And that's why we're in the whole Hex, Pulse, PulseX ecosystem. I've made my move and I'm not putting any more money into it. And people say, why not? I said, well, I've made my move there. I've, I've put my money in there. I've invested in all these projects and I'm not putting any more in because there's other projects out there. Now, there are some people who die hard. They're like, no, I will only invest into this ecosystem. And it's like, well, why? You're not turning your back on it if you go and put some money in another ecosystem. You're just spreading your risk and creating more opportunities. Okay. Let's move further on as I rant here. Going down some of the biggest gainers, Clayton up 9.6, Rocket Pool 9.6, Curve down 9.4, Toncoin 9.2, Zilliqa 9, Near Protocol 9, Filecoin 8.9, Pancake Swap 8.6. These are all positive. Theta Network 8.5, Algorand making a bit of a comeback up 8.3, Litecoin up 8.3, Dash up 8.2, OKC with a code of OKT up 7.8, and EOS up 7.5 with Chainlink up. 7.5%. Just the headlines today to see what's happening. FTX creditor list shows airlines, charities, and tech firms caught in collapse. So back to FTX. The complete list of creditors owed money by the bankrupt cryptocurrency exchange FTX has been released, revealing, revealing a wide range of global companies. Among the potential creditors are airlines, hotels, charities, catastrophic banks, that's not so bad, venture capital companies, media outlets, and crypto companies, along with United States and international government agencies. <laughs> hang on, let's just, hang on, hang on. Hold up. The FTX creditor list shows all of these companies 
and United States and international government agencies. Let's just pause on that for a second. Now, I can't verify that statement. I'm looking at what you're looking at. This is from the sources magazine by Cointelegraph, a very reputable source. But according to this data, they're saying that the United States and international government agencies were creditors to FTX. Since when have your tax dollars been creditors to a crypto exchange platform? Leave comments below. Do you, do you know of any government agency? Now, you might say, hang on, El Salvador bought Bitcoin. That didn't invest in an exchange. That bought Bitcoin. That bought sovereign, immutable, open source, now legal in their uh, country, tender that no one could touch. FTX is way different. Who are these government agencies, American and international, that are now caught in the FTX credited list? That's, that is big. According to another headline regarding the FTX scandal, U.S. federal prosecutors allege that Scam Bankrupt Fraud, sorry, Sam Banker and Freed, invested $400 million in the venture capital firm Modulo Capital with money from the FTX's customers. Investigators allege that Modulo was likely built with criminal proceeds or misappropriated funds. Lawyer costs in the case are estimated to reach hundreds of millions of dollars before the firm's bankruptcy investigation is over. Who's paying the hundreds of millions of dollars? Where's the money coming from? Like, it, think about it. If you're scam bankrupt fraud and you've got no money and you've got a lawyer bill of... Now, the prosecution is fine because that's the government. They've got, a tech, they've got a bill that they can cover. But who's covering Sam's bank legal fees? That's what I'm talking about. There's more to this than meets the eye. Where is the hundreds of million, even ten? Even if you say, right, no, it's only $10 million of, of legal fees or $10 million worth of legal fees, who's covering that? If the kid has no money, where's the money coming from? You say, oh, well, it's his parents. Oh, really? Because they could only put up $4 million of collateral for his bond, and that was in the form of their house. you got to spare $10 million cash lying around to keep your son out of jail. It gets weird. Moving further on, uh, we've got anything else down here? Yeah, we'll go through all of these. Okay, BlockFi unsaid financial reports reportedly shows $1.2 billion FTX exposure. So BlockFi, bankrupt lending, crypto lending firm BlockFi uploaded uncensored financials by mistake, oh dear, revealing $1.2 billion in assets tied up with bankrupt exchange FTX and defunct, def sorry, defunct trading firm Alameda Research. The unretracted or unredacted filings show that as of January 14, BlockFi had $415.9 million worth of assets linked to FTX and a whopping $831.3 million in loans to Alameda. BlockFi filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy on November 8, citing the collapse of FTX just weeks earlier as the cause of its financial troubles. Then we go on to Celsius. Bankrupt crypto lending firm Celsius may issue its own token to repay creditors. This is interesting. In a court hearing, Celsius attorney Ross M. something said the firm is negotiating with its creditors on how to relaunch the platform and adequ adequately pay them back. If approved by creditors and the court, the relaunched version would be a publicly traded company that is properly licensed, which is expected to provide creditors with more money than simply liquidating the company. Man, if Celsius relaunched, would you put your money into that thing? Insane. Let me see some of your comments there as I take a sip here. Okay. Uh, moving on to Binance. Binance holds token collateral and user funds on same wallet by mistake. Oh, God. <laughs> Come on, Binance. Cryptocurrency exchange Binance admitted to mistakenly storing some customer funds in the same wallet with its collateral for Binance minted tokens or B tokens. The exchange already started the process of transferring the assets to dedicated collateral wallets and stressed that B tokens are always fully collateralized and backed one-to-one. -one. Binance previously said that its corporate holdings were recorded in separate accounts and should not form part of the proof of reserves calculations. Man, that's bad. Binance should do better that you know I like Binance, but that's bad. At least they admitted to it. Years ago, Binance had, can you remember? It was a hack. Something went wrong, 
and a lot of money was lost. But CZ took money out of his own pocket, which is one and the same because it's his company. And actually, paid everyone back. So th- that was a that was huge testament to the company. He lost lots of money of people's out of people's wallets, and he actually paid them all back with his own money. So, you know, that shows a lot. The last one: Genesis creditors file securities lawsuit against Barry Silbert and DCG. I don't know who that is. Who cares? Okay, let's go on just to the technicals quickly before closing off. So we can see, geez, this thing is playing out. Now, remember, the tweet I released last week, I want you to look at this area here. If you're looking at the screen, I left these lines in on the on my trading platform, and you're going to see where this is broken out. And, and there it is. Can you see it here? That has just that's broken out of that. Pa- I'll extend it a little bit further. This is doing exactly what I forecast. Now, what I forecasted was that we're going to have an 11% flag, bull flag mast. So we want one of these big green masts here to go up 11%. And noting that America is waking up now, this is actually playing out exactly as it should be. Now, of course, it's crypto. Anything could happen. It could pull back and all my TA is wrong. But in all the predictions I've made on this channel, live or recorded, and they've all come to fruition with the exception of one. Who can remember what that one was? Leave the comments below. What was the one that I got wrong? You can remember what happened. As you uh, leave that down there, Jez has says, loving your work, Stokesy. Evening to you. Thanks, Jez. Appreciate it. Hoping your entrepreneurial ventures are going well, my crypto brother. Maddie Share has said, Adam, I'm still catching up on ETH catching up but at eth on an exchange for staking mate your not your keys not your coins i ag- agreed maddie look you get no argument from me there not your keys not your coin absolutely but that's why i say never put 20 percent in any one place more any more than 20 percent in any one place and it's also why i say only use the the sites of the crypto land now i can't guarantee that none of them will ever fail but coin spot's been around for 10 years and they've had their own audits before the collapse. So I'm not disagreeing with you, Maddie. If it's not my keys, they're not my coin. And any money that I hold in exchange, I am vulnerable. But I still diversify and put my coins in different areas. And I have made a fortune from staking on CoinSpot. And I haven't put all my ETH there. Definitely not. But I am making a return. So uh, very valid point. But... Don't forgo profits that could be made. Now, I know some people say, especially hexagons, don't pick up uh, pennies in front of a freight train. And I really like that saying. But CoinSpot and Binance, they're they're just platforms that I trust. I'm not telling you that you should use them. I'm just saying I do use them. They're on the the crypto.land, which is why I've put them there because I trust them. But yeah, good point. Okay, what have we got? Oh, hi, Eyes on Ties, Crypto Granny. Has said, remember, hit the like. Everyone hit me that like. And going back to the question I asked before, yes, we have your Lita. You are right. The one that I got wrong was because of Nancy. What are we talking about? So going back to my TA, as we bounce all over the shop here, of all the predictions I've made on this channel, I got one wrong. I'm not saying I don't get it wrong more than once. I'm just saying that on this channel, the one prediction I got wrong where I said it's going to go up next week Nancy Pelosi flew to Thailand and that spooked the entire planet. That wasn't a crypto thing. That was a planet Earth thing. And that that was it was actually really good that it happened because it gave us an example where I say in crypto anything can happen. And that was an example of all my TA was right. I had I think I had a run of like 14 or 15 or 16 weeks in a row where I got it right. And then I got one wrong because the Speaker of the House flew to another country. And that's an example of even though I'm so bullish at the moment and I'm telling you and I've said it publicly, I've said it days ago, I'm looking for an 11% bull mast, bull flag mast here. Anything can happen. So don't don't just go logging in the market because I said it, but I'm, I've put it out there and, and I'm still confident. Okay, I'm going to share a quick story with you. I was thinking, uh, preparing for the channel, uh, for the show tonight, times are tough and I I have encouraged you to try and fix stuff instead of buying new stuff. So if you remember a while ago, I told you about a clothes dryer that broke. And I said, I was about to go out and spend $3,000 on a new top of the line AEG clothes dryer. And I thought, 
now I'll see if I can fix mine. And I fixed it and it saved me $3,000. And I put that $3,000 into Bitcoin. So, and now that has grown up even further. So not only do I still have the dryer that I barely use, but it still continues to work. Because I fixed it myself, I took that $3,000, which saved $3,000, and I put it into crypto, which has gone up uh, probably about 50% from when this, this happened. So that $3,000 is now $4,500, and I've got less landfill. So today, I replaced this thing. If you can see that, I'll bring it right in. Does anyone know what that is? Can, can anyone tell me what that is? This piece of plastic was going to cost $4,000. $140 to replace. Who knows what it is? And instead of replacing it through the supplier, I got an eBay and found it for $10. I then went to YouTube and looked up a video of how to replace it. And it took me a total of, well, waiting for it to come off eBay took a few days, but that doesn't really matter. But actually replacing it took me about 60 seconds. And the whole thing cost me $11 as opposed to $440. <laughs> JVA strike. He says it's a black and white thingy. Anyone else? Can anyone, does anyone else know what that is? Hang on, I'll go big. <laughs> so what I want you to do as we figure out what this thing, this black and white thingy that I replaced is, I want you to tell me what have you done over the last few days or weeks that you've saved money on? And I'm not just talking about, you know, getting a smaller coffee. Share it with the community. Is there something that you have done that has saved significant money? For me, saving $3,000 on a dryer, that's big money. Saving $440 on changing a black and white thingy, that's big money. Is there anything that you've done that we can leave in the comments that we can help each other? Robin Hood said it's a fuse. No. Uh, Hexpest, $11 worth of Lego. John D said, switch. Yeah, what type of switch as we play on here? A printer cartridge. No fin bear. It's not a printer cartridge. It's $440 for a black and white thingy. Okay, as you do that, I'll just bring up trading volumes. because we, We're on a bit of a delay here. Okay, so the biggest trading volume over the last 24 hours was Tether, then Bitcoin, then Ethereum, then Binance USD. Interesting. So there's more trading volume on Binance USD than there is on USDC. And then we have Litecoin. I keep telling you about Litecoin. Look at that. Litecoin is ranked 16 in the charts, but when it comes to trading volume, one, two, three, four, five, the sixth biggest trading volume on planet Earth was Litecoin. That's astronomical. It's ranked 16 on the charts, but has the sixth biggest trading volume. John D, you got it. Oh, and so did El Honka. It's a parking brake button. This this genuine out of a six series BMW, that, that's $400, $400 for this piece of plastic. And I'm like, I, I can't, now I could, I could afford it, but I couldn't justify it. I'm like, do I really want to spend $400 on a parking brake button? There's no electronic, it's, it's literally a piece of plastic. And it was going to be $400 and, and whatever muck around with, you know, taking the car there, getting a courtesy car back and taking time. And I literally just thought, surely a piece of plastic. And I, I just put in a screwdriver, popped it out, and then put it in like a piece of Lego. And it went click. And I'm like, does that work? And I turned it on, turned it off, and it worked. So has anyone out there made some – here we go, Craig Patton. He, he's got one. I worked on the public holiday instead of going out to drink with friends. Bloody brilliant, Craig. So the public holiday just – it was Australia Day recently. Happy Australia Day. So you've won, you've won twice there, Craig. Actually, three times. So you worked on the public holiday, so you got more hourly rate. You would have got more super paid to you, depending if you're a contractor or not, but you, you would have got more super paid to you, which would have had a compounding effect, and you didn't lose money hitting the piss with, your, with the boys. Absolutely amazing. Gracie, she said, no spend $400 on pearl collar for Dobie. <laughs> So instead of putting 400, I think you mean now spend. No, I'm not getting Doby a $400 pearl necklace. Uh, Chris D, you were the first one. Sorry, Chris, I've got you there. Chris, our boy, you got the answer first. It was the park break button. You, yes, you did there. Yes, you were first, Chris. I can confirm it. Very good. 
Uh, here we go. Ollie, what did you save money on? Saved on food, eating home more and smarter with food shop. Oh, mate. Ollie, you've given me a good one. Okay. Obviously, if you want to save money, don't go out and eat food, right? Like, don't go out to a restaurant. But I went, I did go to like a, a local bar the other night and I was so impressed with this guy because I went to get like a, a um, stone grill. They give you a, a piece of stone that's like really hot with a steak on it. And you actually cook the steak at your table and cut it into little pieces and cook as you go. Great. So it was about $35. And when I got to the thing, I said, oh, two stone grills things. And he goes, do you want the special or the stone grill? And I said, well, what's the difference? And he goes, well, if you say it's a special, it's going to be $20. And I'm like, what's the difference? And he goes, nothing. It's just that it's Thursday night and it's $20. And I'm like, thank you. And I really was so grateful for the integrity of this guy who owned the restaurant by simply selecting a different thing because it was a Thursday night. It was the same product, but because it wasn't from the main menu, because it was from a specials menu, it was like 50% off nearly or 30, over 30% 30 off. So if you have to go out, then there's another pub, you know, you have tight ass Tuesdays. There's another pub where they have um, like a chicken schnitzel or a salad or a steak for $15. So if you are going to go out, first of all, don't. But second of all, if you are going to go out, really look for those specials in your local town. They'll, they'll be out there. Look for a pub. Look for um, an Asian house. They don't really do it so much in Asian restaurants, but really in Aussie pubs. They, they have these $15 steaks. And when I was in uh, Malibu, which is a very expensive place to live when I was a uni student, they had taco tuesdays and it was like two dollars for a massive taco in malibu on the beach so if, try and find somewhere where you could in fact get some very cheap food that could actually work out cheaper than buying it from the supermarket so that 15 dollars and that 20 dollars example that was in fact cheaper than going to the supermarket and buying that food coming home and cooking it ace cobra has said uh do you have a chat group like telegram you don't seem to be active on Discord, right? No, look, the, the truth is I did have a Discord and I admit my sins. I just didn't really, don't really use it. I, I should, I'm just so short of time because this is just one of my fronts, if you will. I, I have so many jobs and lives that um, I, I just simply don't have the time to give it the proper energy. I, and I should, but I'm, I, I need a staff. Actually, I'll make a declaration. In the bull run, if we're still going, I'll, I'll get a staff and then I can do all of that stuff. John, save money on driving. Good. Jay, saved on labor costs. Changed my own car headlights. Good on you. Uh, Jay has said that. Jay, it's funny you should mention that because you know I'm running around in my little Toyota Corolla. So I've got several cars, but I I'm mainly keep all the very expensive cars polished and ready to go in the garages, just all clean and shiny. But I've been running around in a Toyota Corolla and my tail lights were out. And I'm like, oh, I could just drop it off to this guy and it'll cost me three or $400. I'm like, dude, it's a light bulb. So I had Dino next to me. I got the spanners out and the screwdrivers out and I took the whole assembly off. I took out the bulb and the bulb actually worked. And what, there was a little bit of erosion or corrosion on the terminals between the bulb and the, and the terminal itself. So I got a screwdriver and scratched off the corrosion, put it back on and it worked. And I'm like, I just saved 400 bucks, probably another three or 400 bucks. So good on you, Jay. Do it yourself. And if you don't know how to do it, get on YouTube. You hear this from a guy who's spent years at university. I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I've learned more off YouTube than I did eight years at university. And it's not saying I didn't learn at university. I learned a lot at university. I went to four different universities in three, four different countries, Australia, America, Spain. Uh, am I missing one? Yeah, three, four universities in three countries. And I learned a lot at university, but I've learned way more on YouTube than I have at university. So if you don't know how to do it, look it up on YouTube. Briss, $15 Palmer and pot deal sounds like uh, a pre-COVID inflation era. <laughs> oh, you made me say COVID. Hexpest, down in Brazil, they love the Groupon style format. Lots of cheap local restaurants. Yeah, Groupon, get Groupon. I uh, get Groupon on your phone. I get some incredible deals on Groupon. It's amazing. I actually listened to a podcast about Groupon the other day, and there was actually a lot of um, loss of money in Groupon. So Groupon works at the moment, but where it will work better, Groupon will work better on the blockchain. That was a pretty much a whole put to, to speed it up. Groupon will work much better on the group uh, on the blockchain. If you don't know what Groupon is, it's an app. You go on there, you look for something like massage. 
say you normally get a hundred dollar massage they say use this voucher and you get it for seventy dollars and all you do is you ring up and say hey i want to get this massage now the reason why groupon fails is because if you buy the massage through groupon groupon the company will get like ten dollars of that seventy dollar massage so now the masseuse who normally charges a hundred dollars they sell the massage for seventy dollars but then they have to give groupon ten dollars so they've now actually lost forty dollars so how do how do people bypass it well of course you ring up the masseuse place directly or the restaurant or whatever it is and you say hey it's adam or whatever your name is <laughs> i've got a groupon massage voucher here for seventy dollars do you want me just to come in and i'll pay you and they will always say yes because the second that you buy that groupon voucher They've not only lost that $30, but they've lost a $10 commission or whatever it is. I don't know what the number is, but they basically have to pay twice. They have to pay the discounted rate or receive the discounted rate and then give a commission to Groupon. So if you ever find a Groupon voucher, just actually try doing that. Try actually just ringing out the place and saying, hey, you just want to bypass Groupon. So that's why Groupon will eventually fail because people are, are sort of bypassing the platform. And you can see why it's done. But when it's on the blockchain, the reason why you won't be able to bypass it is because there'll be something that will, someone will cr crack the code where you'll have to keep a record of how it's done and combined with cash will be gone because cash will be gone. You'll have to do it that way. Here we go, Ronnie. I don't know if that made sense. Save thousands of dollars by listening to Adam Stokes explaining the importance to diversify holdings and not being Richard Hart Maxi. <laughs> Ronnie, if I could somehow pay you right now for saying that i would do a reverse super chat for you thank you so much you're so <laughs> he reckons that he saved thousands of dollars by listening to adam stokes and explaining the importance to diversify holdings and not be richard hart maxi so you've created the space ronnie i'm going to fill it ronnie and i have say worked together in the past and a lot of my work with ronnie was dragging him out of the hex community not that there's anything wrong with the hex community but just all he wanted to do was hex and it's like hey you're in hex you've got hex you know there's like all of these twenty thousand other coins that can make you unforeseeable returns as well and i believe that our conversations were happening at the top of hex i'll leave it there because i don't want to get too personal but thank you so much for that comment i think that's hilarious steve j says saved on stress tuned i think off the main street um prostitutes news uh, i like how you've written that yeah, save straight. Don't watch the news, people. Don't watch it. It's ter it's horrific. Hex pest. I did my tail light recently. Save hundreds. My mechanic charged ninety pounds an hour labor, so that's about one hundred and fifty Australian dollars, or about one hundred and twenty US dollars an hour. Just do it yourself. And it, and if you don't do it, if you don't know how to do it, go on YouTube. I I remember. So my crypto sisters. I think I've only got three or four of you on tonight. I remember my cousin wanted her oil changed. This is years ago. And I said, come out here and I'll show you how to do it so you can do it yourself next time. And she said, I'm a girl. I'm not doing that. And I thought, well, look, fair enough. If you're going to pull the gender card for not undoing a sump plug and letting liquid fall out of a sump into a container because of genitals, fine. But don't turn around later and say, oh, the mechanics ripped me off because I didn't understand what they were saying. It's like, well, hang on a second. <laughs> you can't have both. If, if you're too lazy to learn how to do something because you're too lazy or because you want to pull the gender card, you can't then later go back and say, oh, well, they ripped me off because I don't understand what they're saying. Particularly when you've got Uncle Adam or Cousin Adam saying, I will teach you how to do this so you can do it yourself. And even if you don't know how to do it, at least you'll know, you know what's involved in changing oil. Some plug, oil filter, new oil. Got it? Uh, I don't want to know. <laughs> Anymore. Uh, YouTube can save you money. You're damn right, Mark. Thank you, Mark Satoshi. YouTube can save you a lot of money. Matty Share, thanks for the comment on CoinSpot staking. I use them as well, but just for moving fee into crypto. I appreciate your honesty, mate. My pleasure, Matty. I appreciate your good question. It's a very good question about staking uh, Ethereum. Chris, I was an RH maxi, but I have churned out of that still bullish but keeping my eyes up yep that's fine remember when you look at other projects you're not turning your back on the other project 
It's not like you're cheating on your wife or anything or your husband or whatever, whatever you've got. If you, it, you're not married to these projects. There's no contract that says because you invested in Hex or Pulse or Bitcoin or Litecoin or Ethereum that you're not allowed to look at other projects. You're not cheating. You just It's not even like a football team where it's like, I devote my life to Collingwood. No, it's, it's all right. You can look at others. Uh, Steve J, he says, Adam, hope you've watched uh, Rebel News in Davos, keeping the mainstream media on their toes. Yeah, I have. Um, I'm just, you know what, Steve? I'm scared to talk about it on this channel because I don't want to be disappeared. I'll leave it at that. Glenn Mack, quick. Been in crypto since 2007 and I have less BTC. I think you mean less BTC or left BTC, I think you mean, but the same value that I put in. What am I doing wrong? Hang on. Glenn, can you write, rewrite that question? You've been in crypto th since 2007 and I have less BTC, but the same value that I put in. What am I doing wrong? Uh, I'll need more details. I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. But I will answer if you rephrase, my friend. Uh, Balazas Kadi. Balaz Kadi. Monitoring monthly finances closely, type, typing, uh, trying to apply the 50, 30, 20% rule. Very good. Very good. Uh, I'm, I'm blurry. Time to move the lens. It's not lens. It's me. Thank you. I'm getting relaxed here. Yeah, and you can't have been in Bitcoin since 2007 because it wasn't made until 2009. <laughs> so you're definitely going to have to rewrite that. Thank you for picking that up, Ronnie. So, um, yeah, Glenn, you can't have been in crypto since 2007 because Bitcoin white paper was written uh, 3rd of January, 2009. Steve J, decentralized social media is here. Good. John D, think he sold now as a sum, sold some. Look, Glenn, to make it easy, just write to me. Um, look up my email and write to me and we'll look into it. But something's not right there. Finbear, it's wonderful that you find the time to hang out with us, Adam. I thoroughly enjoy the non-hex related content. Thank you, Finbear. Hey, did you see my mug on that stream I shared? with the comments, face for radio. Hey, Finbear, I did look you up because um, I think you've got a fantastic logo. Uh, I did wonder what you look like, and I did see you there, and congratulations for your success there. A uh, quick announcement. Don't forget, if you want to buy a Valentine's gift for your girl or boy, make sure you head over to Ocean Muse. Use the link that I'm about to post again. Uh, Crypto Sister Gracie has a Valentine's gift box for $197. All good stuff. I endorse it. I'm not being paid for this advertisement. I'm just helping out my crypto sister. Okay, so we're going to close off. But before we do, um, I'm going to... Oh, hang on, Chris Bannon, you've just said something. Chris Cannon. But Glenn could have been involved with BitGold, which predates... Yeah, that, that could be right. That could be right. Don't know. Snoop Doggy Dog, 0236 hours here in uniform time zone. <laughs> time zone. Oh, the sacrifices I make to hang out with you. Thank you, Snoop Doggy Dog. Do you want last any last words, Snoop? Because you're probably the um, our American veteran over there in the US of A. Uh, Snoop, leave a comment. I'm, I'm actually going to bring out little um, Punky because she's joined us tonight. Not Punky, sorry. I'm bringing out, as I'm reading many comments here, I'm going to bring out little Clucky. Bear with me. Now I'll go bigger screen so you can see her. Okay. Okay, so it's still very touch and go with this chicken. But she is... Getting some very good treatment. I keep her very clean, very dry, change her bedding, give her liquid. And if anyone knows birds, once, I know I'm blurry, once a bird shuts their eyes, it's a bad sign. But she's just started opening her eyes again. So I'll bring her up. Come here, little one. Okay, there's it. There you go. 
So five days ago, her eye is open. You, you can't imagine how remarkable it is that her eyes are open. She was like unconscious for five days. And now she's coming back. And uh, it truly is an, a magical experience to see this bird hold on. And as I said, we have a responsibility to to look after these animals and, and not just simply not just simply kill them as soon as something goes wrong. But but I understand. I'm, I'm, it's so personal. I want to make it clear. If you've had to put down an animal, I am not having a go by any means. I understand entirely. Like I'm petrified of the day that I have to put down Dino. And I get it. Like With a dog, you, you can see it more. But with birds, it, it's not so black and white because it... They're such unique creatures. Anyone who's raised birds, you know what I mean? They're like you, you can't sort of talk to them like you can dogs. They don't communicate as well. And um, there's not so much veterinary services around them. So um, putting down a dog, I, I acknowledge it, it has to be done, particularly when they're suffering and they're in a lot of pain. But with Clucky, the vet was like, I just, you know, she was great. But she was basically like, you know, just euthanize it. And I'm like, no. Nah. So this is the liquid I give her. Um, I give her one meal every every two hours. So every two hours, I give her one meal. It's just a tiny amount of liquid uh, to keep her hydrated. And yeah, she's she's doing well. She's here with me now. Um, so thank you everyone who's been so kind with the support with Clucky. Let's look at your comments. Um, thank you, Blob Fish King, and thank you for BFK. Thank you for your comments throughout the week. I appreciate it. Steve J, love your work. Uh, thanks, Stokesy. Thanks, Steve. I, I know I was a bit over the shop today, but it, I'm actually, I think I'm a bit dehydrated after the amount of work I've done um, in the gym and the pool over the weekend. I wonder if the US will sink faster than the Titanic. Lee Perry, thank you, Lee. He says, uh, love your stream. Thanks, Adam. You're welcome. Grace has said, old clucky. Got love hearts. Craig, love your work, mate. Uh, and really appreciate you taking the time to educate us all. Thank you. I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm very grateful that you're all here. And there's one book I want you to all read your homework over the week. So remember in, in a crypto winter, it's a time to do the macro stuff. And I actually want you to read how to win friends and influence people. Most people would have read that. I want you to read that. Not so much. It's not really so much about winning friends and influencing people. Yes, it is of course in the title, but it's just a really powerful book about, um, about being human and understanding people's perspective. And the, the number one thing I want to say to you is, is thank you. Thank you for, you know, giving me your Sunday night. Some of you join me on Christmas day and new year's Eve. We've been on a long journey and I hope to continue to give me more. And I know randomly I'll bring in a chicken and a dog or a BMW handbrake switch. And it's because, you know, we need to humanize this and crypto can be very stressful. Sometimes we're talking about, you know, money and loss and investment and it's, and, and the competition and the stress around it. So every now and then, let's just, let's just let's just remember what it's all about. Don't forget to every now and then, like Ferris Bueller said in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, if you don't stop, life moves so quickly. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you're going to miss it. And life is moving so quickly. And the crypto timeline reminds us of this. And if you don't stop every now and then to cherish your family, your chickens, your dogs, your subscribers, your community, it doesn't matter if you've got millions of dollars because you've got no one to share it with. What's the point? So please look after your health. Look after each other. Look after our crypto sister, Gracie. Go get yourself some of this wonderful product from Ocean Muse. And um, please diversify your holdings and pray for Clucky because she's in my lap now and she's looking pretty good. She must think she's been outside for eight to ten years. And she spent the last week inside a lovely house. So she must think it's very weird, but she's calm. She's chilling out. Okay, I'm ranting here. Nothing like a good rant. Don't forget to hit that like button. I'm Adam Stokes. Thanks for listening. Happy investing. Uh, hang on, Snoop Doggy, you just got in there. Snoop Doggy, you got the last word. Snoop says last words are share Stokes's channel and do it as if you as if it really mattered to you, your family, community, nation, and world. He's legit one of the men of service doing this education for cause versus dollars. Snoop, beautifully timed, beautifully written, very sincere, and I'm very humbled. Uh, 
And of course, there is some very little pocket money I do with this, but my number one intent is to protect you from the scams out there and ensure that the corruption of fake, fake money is brought to our attention and so we can respond appropriately. I'm not always going to get everything right on this channel, but I can give you my word that I'll do my best to keep it real. Snoop, you're an absolute champion. Go to bed. It's like three o'clock in the morning over in the States. Thank you so much. I'm Adam Stokes. Thanks for listening. Happy investing. Go clucky. And I'll talk to you next time.